Hi, Scoof Patch. Welcome to the uh, fourth part of my tutorial series on making a top down scrolling tutorial. Um, today, we are going to look at how to get these green zombie cubes to actually hurt you and end the game when they touch you. So, let's get on with that straight away. Let's go into the player sprite. And uh, what we need to do is add in. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, disable this M key to add enemies. So when you're not designing levels, just detach this. Let's put a, uh, an if statement there, like this. This protects us. So when we press M key, it's never going to go in and do this, not if there's nothing in there. So that just protects us from being able to uh, add new enemies by pressing M by mistake at any point. When you want to add them, just plot that down like that. Then the M key will now run those and add an enemy back in there when you don't want it okay so now we're protected from adding them by mistake so duplicate your broadcast here and create a new one and we're going to add a broadcast to check whether we are touching an enemy so let's call new message and we're going to say touching enemy like that okay last one in the list of broadcasts so let's have a receiver for this when i receive touching enemy. Now this is a nice straightforward bit of code in here. Just have an if and then we want sensing touching mouse pointer. No, we want to change that to be touching zombie, which is the name of the sprite there. If we touch a zombie, we need to end the game. Now for that, let's create a new variable and I will make it for all sprites. And I'm going to call it end like that. So when we touch a zombie, we set end to die like that. Okay, that's all we need in that. And now we have this repeat loop here. So what we're going to say is keep repeating until, and in there greater than, and then we're going to have end is greater than. And just delete that side don't have anything in it so when end is bigger than nothing then we're going to end and come down here so we need to set end just up here uh, where should we do it um let's do it right at the very top here set end to blank so end is starting as blank and as soon as we touch an enemy end will be bigger than blank and we'll drop out. So that should just stop the game as soon as we touch an enemy right now. Just try that. Yeah, game over, can't move. End is now die. Okay, let's get rid of that end variable from the view. And now we want to do something down here. Now in my zombie cube game, when I touched an enemy, I shook the screen. So let's do that. So down here, let's have an if else at the end of the, end of the game loop. And we're going to say equals end equals die. Okay, so if end equals die, we're going to run this bit of code here. And that bit of code is going to be a um, new custom block. Make block. And it's going to be shake screen. And now add in two variables. And scroll X and scroll Y like that. Two parameters. Now do not run without screen refresh. Okay, keep that block box unticked because we want this to be. Well, it's going to be shaking the screen when it's in here, so we mustn't have it running uh, without screen refresh. Otherwise, it's not going to see it shaking. So leave that blank. There it is. Ah, oh, keeps moving my block out of the way. Okay. And we're going to add that shake screen to the if condition. So if ends die, shake the screen. And pass into that our two variables, scroll x and scroll y. OK, so it's now shaking the screen at the position that we currently are. Now let's code up our scroll x, uh, shake screen script. Now let's make this. Um, we need a variable. Create a variable called i for this sprite only. So it's a little lowercase i. And we'll set i to how much we want it to shake 
so we want this to shake for say a second so 30 so the 30 shakes is a second because it's 30 frames a second our script our game is running at then we need a repeat and we'll repeat for i like that and what we need to do is set the position of scroll x so scroll x is where the camera is pointing so if we move the camera around rapidly it'll shake the screen so what you can do in here is position it at now we're using the scroll x from the that passed in parameter here plus and now this is going to be multiply we're going to do i because i starts at 30 so 30 pixels times by a random amount of movement and the random amount is going to be from minus 1 0.0 to 1.0 so any amount between those two values and we're going to do the same with scroll y set scroll y to the scroll y parameter plus i times a random amount so this is going to move it anywhere between minus 30 and 30 because we're timesing by i so minus 1 to 1 times by 30 and after we've moved it we're going to broadcast and wait and we're going to broadcast the move level then we're going to change actually before before the broadcast do a change i by minus one so as we go through it starts at 30 and it goes down and down and down so this amount of shake will start big and will get smaller and smaller now we can test whether that shake works let's just put a call to shake here and pass in pass in zero by zero so it's in the middle okay. there we go every time i can run that it starts shaking a lot and then calms down So let's just run that and see if it actually works. Excellent. Okay, and once it's finished shaking, what we really wanted to do is allow us to restart the game. So let's move back over here. Have a look at what we did. Let me just move these scripts across. At the moment, we've only got one repeat loop here. Um, as soon as it ends, uh, shakes the screen and then finishes so we need it to loop back and run the game again now our whole loop really should go right to the very start here so let's have a control forever loop and put it around the whole game so now after it's finished shaking it's going to come right back up the top set end to not and opposition to the middle and broadcast setup again which is going to then start positioning all the zombies now we've got to be careful there because that's going to create a duplicate of all our zombies because the zombies are already on the level so what we need to do is have a tidy up before we repeat back so it'd be worth having a vent broadcast and wait at the very bottom here just there and we're going to call this reset we broadcast a reset before it goes around again and in reset we need to wipe out all the zombies so Let's have a receiver in here. When I receive reset, then I want to end all the clones. So delete this clone. Let's just make sure that works. So I die and it resets. Brilliant. Okay. So next thing, we really don't want the game to start as soon as the screen appears. What I did in my zombie cube game was have a thing, a bit of text on the screen saying, press any key to start. And that just gives it a much more professional intro. So let's stop this and have a look at how we can do that. So in the player sprite here. So at the moment, we set up all of the positioning, we broadcast set up and we start the loop. So before we start the loop here, this is where we want to have the press any key bit. Um, so for that, let's just move things down a bit so we've got a bit more room. Scripts always start to balloon a little bit. 
as you code these games. Right, so we want to have a wait just in here. But before we wait, we want to make sure everything is drawn on the screen in the right position. That's quite easy. All we need to do for that is broadcast more level. But um, let's do into events and we'll broadcast and wait. So just here, before we start the game loop, we want to broadcast move level. That will position everything on the screen in the right positions. And then in here, we can have a loop that waits for a key press. So if you go down, you can have the uh, wait until but underneath the move level after, before we start our game loop, have a wait until then sensing and let's have a uh, key pressed. Now you can choose what you put in here. You can either have a particular key you want to start the game or you can have any key. And I'm going to put in any key for now. Um, and as soon as any key is pressed, the game will begin. So let's just run that. Okay, so nothing's happening at the moment. Press a key and the game starts. Now, one question is, why were none of those cubes visible? So we broadcast move level and that in the zombie script, move level. Now that positions them, which sets the is visible or not, but it doesn't actually show them. That is done in move enemy here. So what we need to do is call this move enemy as well as the as the uh, move level. So let's add in another broadcast and wait underneath the move level where we call move uh, enemy. Now let's run that. It should. There we go. That's better. So that's the start of the game. Press a key and it all begins. What we need now is a way of winning the level. Um, so next tutorial, we're going to just clean up the project and look at how to get uh, a winning uh, game screen with maybe a timer and something fun like that. So join me next time. Thanks for watching this Griff Batch. Bye now.